Hi everyone, I'm Stella Anderson, a high school principal in suburban Chicago. Dear viewer, my story is of a special kind. The hero in it is negative energy. Have you ever seen your own flesh and blood destroy the joy of your own child? My dear, this is where my story comes from, Dot. Before I share how my sister tried to destroy my daughter's happiness, please like and subscribe to join our community of survivors. Mom, these mashed potatoes are amazing as always. Emma helped herself to seconds at our weekly Sunday dinner. These gatherings were our tradition, just me, my daughter, my sister Diana, and our mom in the house I'd kept after losing Emma's father. You're going to get fat eating like that. No man wants a chubby wife. Diana picked at her food, checking her phone for messages from her latest dating app matches. Diana, stop it. I shot her a warning look. Emma's perfect just as she is. Easy for you to say. You got married at 23. Some of us aren't so lucky. She waved her fork at her empty ring finger. Our mom sighed. Maybe if you tried that new matchmaker I mentioned. I've tried three matchmakers this year, and two psychics and that crystal healer. They all say my love luck is blocked. Diana's voice cracked. It's not fair, I'm running out of time. That's when Emma cleared her throat. Speaking of marriage, Michael asked me to marry him last night. I said yes. The silence was deafening. Mom squeaked. I wiped happy tears, remembering my own engagement. But Diana, her face went stark white. You can't, she whispered. You're too young. It's not right. I'm 24, Aunt Diana. The same age you always say was perfect for marriage. But I'm the aunt. The older generation. You can't get married before me. It'll steal all my remaining luck. Diana, that's ridiculous. Is it? Remember Cousin Sarah? Married before her older sister and now Jenny's 40 and alone. Just like I'll be. She stormed out, nearly knocking over her chair. Later that night, my phone buzzed with a text. Getting emergency reading from Madame Rose. She knows things, Stella. Dark things about what happens when the natural order is violated. You're being dramatic, I texted back. Come meet us for lunch tomorrow. Let's celebrate properly. Can't? Madame Rose says I need a cleansing ritual. Family curses are serious business. I showed the messages to Emma. She laughed, but I saw worry in her eyes. Mom, you don't think Aunt Diana would actually try to stop the wedding, right? Looking at Diana's increasingly frantic texts about luck and curses, I wished I could reassure her. But I knew my sister. And this was just the beginning. Let's just take it one day at a time, sweetie. I'm sure she'll come around. I had no idea then just how wrong I was. Or how far Diana would go to protect her chances at love, even if it meant destroying her own niece's happiness. The bridal shop's bell chimed as Diana burst in during Emma's first dress fitting. Her eyes were wild, clutching a stack of old photographs. Stop everything. I had a vision last night. Emma can't wear white. It'll seal my fate forever. Emma stood frozen on the pedestal, the delicate lace gown half-pinned. Aunt Diana, you're scaring the seamstress. Look at these. Every cousin who married before their elders, divorced, cheated on, or worse, it's the family curse. This is ridiculous. I started gathering the photos, but froze at one particular image. Diana in a wedding dress, circa 2010. You were engaged? To Robert, her voice cracked. Until my younger cousin announced her engagement, she stole my luck, just like Emma's doing now. My mother burst through the door. Stella, why didn't you tell me about the curse? Diana showed me everything. The patterns, the omens. Mom, you can't seriously believe. Three generations, Stella. No younger cousin who married first stayed married. The universe demands order. The next weeks were chaos. Diana convinced our aunt to cancel hosting the engagement party. Bad energy in the house. She told the caterer our chosen date was cursed. She even had our mother throwing salt over her shoulder whenever Emma mentioned wedding plans. Your aunt means well, Michael tried to comfort Emma after another ruined planning session. She's just... losing her mind? Yesterday she told my bridesmaids they'll never find husbands if they stand up with me. I confronted Diana at her apartment. The place was a shrine to superstition. Crystals, talismans, scattered tarot cards. This has to stop. You know what stopped? My engagement. Robert left me the day after Jessica announced her wedding. Said he had a bad feeling. Now I know why. That was 13 years ago. And I haven't had a serious relationship since. The curse is real, Stella. I'm trying to protect all of us. The engagement party was the final straw. Diana showed up in a white dress, carrying a bag of protective herbs. I found Robert's Facebook, she announced to the horrified crowd. He's married with three kids. That should have been my life. But Jessica stole it, and now Emma's stealing what's left of my chances. 
This ends now. I won't let you curse me forever. Security dragged her out as she screamed about curses and stolen destiny. Mark my words. This marriage will destroy us all. The signs are clear. Emma, if you love this family, you'll wait until I... Half the guests left. Emma was in tears. And my mother was throwing handfuls of rice around the room to absorb the negative energy. Later that night, I found Diana's old engagement album. The real story was in the margins. Robert's family opposing the marriage, Diana's increasing obsession with signs, the restraining order he filed before leaving town. My phone buzzed. Diana had posted online. Emergency protection circle tonight. Must save my niece from the curse of defying natural order. All true believers welcome. P.S. Bring cash for Madame Rose's special candles. This wasn't just about superstition anymore. My sister was unraveling, and she was determined to drag Emma down with her. Code blue, room 204. Emma's voice shook as she rushed past Diana lurking in the hospital corridor. The third time this week. The spirits warned me every time you plan another wedding detail, tragedy strikes your patients. Their blood is on your hands. I got the frantic call from Emma during lunch break. Mom, I can't take it anymore. She's telling patients' families that my cursed energy is making people sick. Security footage showed Diana sneaking into the hospital chapel, leaving burned photos of Emma in wedding dresses. Her protection rituals were getting darker. Look what I found in her apartment. My mother's hands trembled, holding bank statements. $60,000 to psychics and curse breakers this year alone. She's emptied her retirement fund. Emma discovered the shrine in Diana's spare room. Wedding magazines with Emma's face scratched out. Walls covered in curse prevention symbols. Journals filled with rambling prophecies. July 15th. Another sign. Emma's patient died during my cleansing ritual. The spirits demand she cancel the wedding. August 3rd. Talk to Robert in my dreams again. He says he still loves me, but the family curse keeps us apart. Robert never existed. That engagement party? The fiancé was a hired actor? Diana paid him to pretend for three months. Diana's online posts became more unhinged. Day 47 of curse-breaking ceremonies. The spirits say Emma's wedding will bring death to our bloodline. True love requires sacrifice. She must understand. She started following Michael to work, leaving warning signs in his car. Your future wife carries dark energy. Save yourself before it's too late. The hospital board called an emergency meeting after Diana burst into the ER screaming about karma. Emma's supervisor played the security tape. Your marriage will kill innocent people. Every patient you touch is cursed. Only my suffering can break the cycle. That night, I found Emma sobbing over her phone. Diana had created a web page. Cursed nurse the truth about Emma Anderson, complete with fake patient death statistics and warnings about tainted medical care from curse carriers. She's lost her mind, Mom. What if she hurts someone? The cards never lie, Stella. Emma's wedding date matches Robert's death numerology. Robert isn't dead, Diana. He never existed. Liar. You're all poisoned by the curse. Only I can see the truth. Her eyes were wild, unfocused. This wasn't just superstition anymore. My sister was having a complete breakdown. My phone buzzed. Diana had posted Emma's confidential patient records online with proof of her cursed care. Diana had crossed a line. And I finally understood. This wasn't about luck or curses. This was about a sister who'd built her whole identity on lies, watching her carefully constructed delusions crumble as her niece found the happiness she'd only pretended to have. The police lights flashed outside Madame Rose's shop. Diana screamed as they led her spiritual advisor away in handcuffs. She's a fraud. Twelve clients lost their life savings to her curse-breaking scams. The spirits will punish you all. She's the only one who understands the curse. But the evidence was damning. Bank records showed Diana had stolen mom's jewelry to pay for $80,000 in emergency cleansing rituals. At Cousin Rachel's wedding that weekend, Diana made her final stand. She grabbed the microphone during toasts. You're all blind. I faked my engagement because the family curse was real. Robert was an actor. I paid him with dad's inheritance. Every relationship I ruined, every job I lost, it wasn't bad luck. I made it happen to protect us from the curse. I stalked Emma's patients. I posted fake reviews. I made everything up because I couldn't stand watching someone younger find love first. Her workplace had enough after discovering she'd used company computers to create that hate website about Emma. HR found hundreds of threatening emails sent to the hospital. 
Clear your desk, and the restraining order means you can't come within 500 feet of any hospital property. Diana lost her apartment next. Turns out she'd stopped paying rent, spending everything on psychics and curse removal specialists. The community turned their backs as the truth spread. The loving sister, the dedicated aunt, it was all an act. Years of lies, manipulation, and stolen money exposed. Two months later, Emma walked down the aisle. The chapel glowed with autumn sunlight. No crystals, no curses, just pure joy. The only bad luck, Emma said in her vows, would have been letting fear stop us from finding this happiness. I got a letter from Diana last week, postmarked from Seattle. Inside was a torn wedding invitation and a news clipping about Madame Rose's conviction. You were right. There was a curse, but I created it. Every time I see Emma's wedding photos online, I'm reminded that I wasted my life fighting imaginary curses instead of facing reality. Don't write back. I don't deserve forgiveness. This morning, Emma texted me a photo, her first ultrasound. As I shared the family's excited responses, I noticed Diana's social media had been deleted. No more curse warnings, no more fake relationships, just silence. Some say family means unconditional love, but sometimes love means protecting your happiness from those who destroy it out of jealousy. Sometimes the real curse is refusing to let go of toxic people. Some bridges, once burned, should stay ashes. They say karma comes for everyone eventually. Diana lost everything trying to curse others with her unhappiness. Meanwhile, Emma's living her best life, proving that the only real bad luck is letting someone else's bitterness poison your joy. That's what I learned from all this. Sometimes the happy ending isn't about forgiveness. Sometimes it's about walking away and never looking back. Would you keep Diana's invitation to the baby shower unopened? Or would you give her one last chance at redemption? Sometimes family members hurt us deepest. But is blood truly thicker than toxic behavior? At what point do we prioritize our peace over family ties? Share your thoughts below. Should toxic family members get infinite chances because they're family? Or is cutting them off sometimes the healthiest choice? If you've dealt with toxic family members or superstitious drama, hit like and subscribe for more stories about choosing yourself over toxic relationships. See you in the next video.